Everybody, welcome to another episode of the Random Hour. As always, I'm your co-host Deb Moore. Uh, Kyle will not be with us today because he had to pull an extra shift at work, so he left me unsupervised. So I found somebody new to fill in. So I'm gonna let him introduce himself real fast. Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Jobert. Um, I'm saying my last name because Dev can't figure it out, and I want to help you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> dude, best. totally. It's just like uh, words are hard. Oh, trust me, all the time. We are powered here at the Random Hour. We are powered by ADHD and dyslexia. So half time, sometimes we'll have our script and we'll memorize it, but right. we'll have like little keynotes and we'll read it, and we're like, oh, no, no, words are hard. I can't read today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess you want me to tell people what I do. John, uh, you can't go ahead. All yours in case I I don't want to miss some. So go ahead. Floor is yours. Oh, okay. Uh, So uh, again, I'm Jonathan Jobert with uh, Jason and the Krugers. I have an independent production company called Forgotten Profit Studio. So we do like metal and punk. um, And then every once in a while, I'll do commercial work for other people. I do stand up comedy, I perform at haunted houses. And yeah, man, just been doing this a long time. And I don't know, it's uh, been playing guitar for 35 years, got tired of the idea of record labels telling me what to do. So I was like, well, I'm just going to start doing my own thing. And then I can give them the finger when they tell me what I have to do. And so that's (laughs) kind of where it is. What happened? First question. Yeah. Okay. It's all good. So the first question I'm going to ask you here is since you are a horror fan what are some of your favorite uh favorite less popular slasher movies oh man um probably one of my favorite ones is a movie called versus that most people don't know (laughs) but uh yeah if you're into samurais zombies and mobsters it's like the best film you'll ever see and then the coolest part is like every character has a different martial arts style that they fight so it's this mix of like comedy and gore, and it's just one. That's probably my all-time favorite unknown horror film. Yeah, and I don't consider I don't know it's horror, but it, it certainly counts because it's graphic violence and there's zombies, so it's got to be horror, you know. Uh, let's see, next one outside of that, uh, which is the cult classic Army of Darkness. And oh, there you again. go. Yeah, dude, I love that one. That's that's our jam, bro. Like we did an entire album dedicated to the Evil Dead franchise because of Army of Darkness. Yeah, I saw I saw that in our research. Yeah, we did. And we were like, that's what we thought. Okay, that helped. Yeah. It's always cool when on our end when we do research on guests and people are like, yeah, I had this idea, and we're like, awesome. That's what we thought. And then some people, it's like, yeah, that wasn't the plan at all. We're like, oh, oh, shucks, <laughs> our research no, failed. Yeah, for as silly as we are, most of our stuff is kind of planned out in Jason and the Krugers. It's just like one of those things where uh, the whole origin of that band started because we wanted to have fun, but all of us were professional musicians in other aspects. But literally, the reason we started it was uh, Juan, the bass player, and I were sitting together, and I was like, man, let's write some music where we don't have to look at the fretboard. And it was like, okay, let's do some metal punk, you know, and that was it. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this: which so- which song of yours do you have the most fun covering? Oh, of art, like the what song do I like to play by us? Or do are you yes. talking about cover? Oh, uh, let's see. One of my favorite ones. Uh, I like the night he came home because that's super aggressive. I uh, usually get people moshing to that, mm-hmm. and I like to see people get into that. My favorite one, though, uh, of all times is My Three Dog, which is about the human centipede, um, because mm-hmm. there's a fake intro where we tell everybody uh, we sing songs about documentaries like the human centipede. And then we go in a spiel about that. And then we get an entire room to yell out ass to mouth over and over again. So that's hilarious. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Speaking of that music video, can you just like can you you guys did do a music video? I did see that you did the music video for that song. Can you describe the creativity was it came to creating that music video? I know I'm jumping ahead, but you had oh, mentioned yeah, yeah, it. No, I'm gonna jump man. ahead. Yeah. So for the night he came home, it was like the second song we ever wrote, and um, we just wanted to do something Halloween oriented. 
And that was like overt Halloween oriented, oriented to let everybody know that that's what we were about. We we're going to be focusing on horror movies. We're going to be focusing on Halloween stuff. And we lived in an old bed and breakfast. So we had access to this house and um, we contacted a friend of ours. So almost all of our productions are done extremely low budget, either through like bartering or connections. And we just kind of wanted to retell the original Halloween story. You know, Dr. Loomis, our friend, uh, we considered that character as the money grubbing character, right? Because he just wanted his fame. He wanted his fortune off of the serial killer kid. And so we got one of our friends at the time who was like overweight and in it for no reason at all. He'll just eat cheeseburgers, right? To express that he's just greedy and doesn't care. <laughs> and you'll see him like squish it in the camera and stuff. Uh, and the idea for that was basically, uh, we always made fun of the notion that no matter how far you run away from characters like Jason or Michael Myers, they just show up regardless. Yes. Of who they are. So the idea is, <laughs> yeah, it's like, let's get her running all the way down the street obviously leaving Michael Myers behind, you know, killing all this and this house full of people. And then when she finally gets to the neighbor's house and knocks on the door, Michael Myers answers the door, you know? And so it was what? just a, a way to kind of make fun of all those things. Listen, yeah. I don't know what and it is with that trope. That too because... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. That's the idea. Uh... You can't escape. But yeah, that day, man, we filmed it. Uh, so the scene with the band, this was before we had all the masks and stuff. Uh -huh. um, we shot that in part of it was at the bed and breakfast, which was like the haunted bed and breakfast. Um, and then the other part was in the woods, but it was like 12 degrees and we were digging a hole to kind of do a shallow grave, but it was too wet. So, <laughs> so the hole only got about two feet deep and we stopped, but we made the death metal vocalist sit in it anyway. It's <laughs> like, no, nah, that's, that's part of it, you know? Oh, and the man. whole, yeah, that whole project started um, because uh, the original drummer at the time was in the army mm -hmm. and he got called. So he was going to go, he was getting shipped off to Iraq. Mm -hmm. And we were like, uh, we should record some music right before you leave. He's like, man, I'm leaving in three days. And so we got together and we're like, okay, we're going to do 10 songs. And here are the rules. There can't be more than three riffs. There's got to be woes in every song because nobody gives a shit about what you got to say when you're at a bar and um, <laughs> no twinkling dink agree. gay shit is what we call it. Yeah. I mean, that's what it was. And we're like, don't twinkly dink. And that was our way of saying don't overplay. Right. So the whole point is just to make something super catchy, super fast and that people could uh, pay attention to, you know, so there's like, we intentionally do that. Like a woe has to be literally in every single song. There will be woes in there because uh, the way we write lyrics is we write our parts and then we write a part for the audience to sing. And so it's a way of forcing them to participate if we're playing in some shithole. Oh, okay. You know, if we're playing, yeah. So it's just that. Cause again, nobody cares, you know, and anyone who's a musician will know you go to a bar and you're playing like you're the background music for the dude or the chick trying to hook up that night. You know, like you're number four on the list of things they care about. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, speaking right. of, if Kyle was here, this is a question he made because Kyle he just loves fun facts. And what is yeah. some, what is a fun fact of famous serial killers that you, that you love that you're like, oh hey, this serial killer used to like to do this. Uh, Albert Fish, who is like a notorious child serial killer, and he would uh, like stab objects into his urethra. So when they wanted to electrocute him, they had to do an x-ray and they found all these steel pins shoved in his pelvis in different locations. And then when he was getting walked to the electric chair, he told the guards that it was a thrill and it's the first, it's the only one he hasn't gotten to try yet. <laughs> so yeah, okay. that's the one. That's gonna, I, my wife's big into serial killers. I have to ask her if she knew that. That's the first. Listen. Oh yeah, man. Was, yeah, I did a lot of uh, serial killer research. In fact, there's a couple. I might get back into do it, but I used to do uh, every once in a while. Hopeless will do a serial killer episode. So I've done like uh, Henry. What was it? Holmes. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with him. Henry Howard Holmes. Yep. Yeah, the uh, wasn't he like the first serial killer with the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did one for him, and I did one for. Uh, Another woman, I forgot her name off. Jane Toppin, I think. 
I got banned for that for 30 days uh, for, for making fun of Irish people. But I mean, it was a serial killer. So I, was, I didn't know I couldn't make fun of serial killers online. So, uh, Yeah, don't get me started. Was it YouTube? Uh, uh, I got hit on TikTok. I had to appeal it. And then I got hit on Facebook. I got hit on all of them, actually. Uh, YouTube surprisingly didn't uh, didn't tag me for that. But the other ones did. And it's because I said uh, that Jane Toppin's father moved her to the States because he was a whiskey drinking, potato eating white be- wife beater. Which was true. He did beat his wife. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's okay. And then I showed a picture of like the Notre Dame. <laughs> no, oh yeah, that's what, yeah. hey, don't mess with the fighting Irish man. They love their Notre Dame. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. what really got you. Notre Dame got you. I know they probably did, man. They were like, "That's our logo," and he, he said the fits of things with it. Uh, yeah, I try to be comical <laughs> with all of that weird stuff, man. It's just like the that's the whole point of the character, you know, like the character the whole background for the band story is that, uh, and it's ridiculous. So bear with me if you want to hear it or if your listeners want to hear it, but basically, uh, so the backing story is there was once, um, an Asian disco superstar legend, and he was the number one producer in the world. Um, and then his father dies and it, it turns out that he came from a long line of ancient Chinese managers. And the way they would do it is they would practice necromancy and bring back musicians from the dead. And then they would pick whatever genre was the most popular and they would make them the icons. But what ended up happening is uh, somebody thought that our Asian manager looked like a chick and tried to pick up on him one night and then got mad that he wasn't a chick. So they hit him in the face and ruined his magic spell. And then all of the, musicians came back from the dead but they were decayed and decrepit Ooh. and they were all punk like they wouldn't listen and they were all stupid and so his journey the the manager's journey is to try to control this band and he was like okay well they smell bad they're stupid and they can't do anything right i'm just going to enter them into horror punk and, and that's that's it and then, and then it's a fight the whole time so like if you listen to our albums a lot of them will have because uh, we we're big into old like old rap records and old icp and stuff so everything has a sketch on the full-length albums if you grab those and so they'll be often like in the first one slasher thrasher you meet the manager and we try to get him eaten by dogs and just weird <laughs> weird stuff throughout Oh man, an insane cloud posse right there. I don't know if anybody of our listeners even remembers insane insane cloud posse. Yeah, man, we considered it the cut. Like we have a, they have the hatchet man and we have the gabagool because it was like, well, that's its cousin because that was we all loved horror. We all loved horror rap. We just happened to look, be musicians, like metal musicians and stuff as well. So we're like, how do we give homage to that kind of ridiculousness? And I was like, well, let's put some sketches in it. Let's make some stuff funny to it, you know? Right. Lord, another thing we're big on here on this show is we're big on snacks. So when you guys are on the road from gigs, you know, you're traveling on the road, what's your go-to road snack while y'all travel from gig to gig? Uh, from probably like uh, the dogs, hot dogs in the gas station. Listen, like that's the... That's yeah, that's listen, I'm sorry. My personal opinion, those are better than the hamburgers. Yeah, bro. The cheddar jalapeno hot dogs, that's what I go for all the time. And it's one of those things where you know, when you're on the when you're on the road uh traveling a lot, that if you don't spend your money wisely, there's a point where it just zeroes out or you come back in debt. And all of us are very conscious of that. So we're always like, "Oh man, two hot dogs for 2 bucks, game on," you know? I could refill this fountain drink game on. You know, it's all that. They make fun of me because I fill up my cup with water from the bathroom because I don't want to pay for an ice cup. <laughs> so no, I wouldn't either. I know. They're like, Dude, that's, that's toilet like... water. I was like, bitch, it's from the sink. <laughs> that's toilet water. <laughs> Drink yeah. from the toilet. That's how, listen, that's a low point in life when you're like, man, gas station, toilet water. That's what I need. God, yeah. I remember. And all right, you just opened up a core memory. I remember back in 2015, you remember when McDonald's yeah. would give you, and this is what's crazy now. Speaking of McDonald's, I saw this. I don't know if it's true or not, but McDonald's is like charging you for refills. And back in 2015, they start charging yeah, you like. Yeah, they it, bro. 
They're going to single-handedly destroy the music com- community. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm like, really? Over, like, yeah. a box that probably cost you. So I worked at Six Flags over Georgia. And those yeah. box cost about $10 a unit, $10 a box. So it's like, dude, yep. you you want, I don't mean to go on a rant, but I saw that the other day and you made me think of that. Oh, and I'm man. like, dude. It's like, dude, that's the one good one. The only good thing about McDonald's is sweet tea, too. Yeah, like that one ninety nine drink. If I'm sitting in your god awful restaurant, I'm at least gonna fill up my drink at least two times before I leave. Yeah, that's just me. But I need my sugar crash. Oh, I'm telling you, we are. If Kyle was here right now, he'd be drinking a C four or a Bang. Heck, it's um, it's noontime here. Before uh, this morning, I grabbed a um. What I grab? I grabbed a muscle milk mixed with some ghost pre workout, and I was jittery. I said, "All right, it's time to start, hey baby." Oh yeah, dude. I I think our drummer single handedly keeps fucking uh, Red Bull in <laughs> Red Bull in business, dude. Because he'll go through like six or ten a day. Mm-hmm. Like that dude is just nonstop, bro. Nonstop. Oh, listen. I got a so, coworker. He drinks like two a day, and I'm convinced he drinks about. If he drinks two a day, and sometimes three, if we ever have, um, like I said, a lot of people aren't showing sure I coach for a living. So like right now, if we have yeah. morning practice, he's got two in his hand, he's crushing them. But if we have afternoon practice, mm. he leaves, he comes back with two more. I'm like, dude, how can you drink four Red Bulls a day? Ah, man, I like that watermelon like, flavor. I'm like, right, okay. bro, I really want kidney stones. That's I do that for them kidney stones. <laughs> I can feel the pressure in my <laughs> in my dome. Dude. You ain't lying. That's like after a while. I don't know if uh, if you're a big fan of Buffalo Wild Wings, but man, they they've got this Red Bull Sunrise. It's tequila with watermelon Red Bull mix. Whew. I stay away. I, cr- <laughs> I stay away. I I I learned the hard way. I said I'm gonna try one. I was like eight yeah. bucks. I'll try one. Yeah, no right. five five of them later. I was like, oh, I'm addicted <laughs> to them. And now when I do go with my wife, she's like, you want one? Nah, you want something? It's your turn. <laughs> it's your turn to drink. I'll yeah, drive. I've reached the age where I have to. I've reached the age where I have to make considerations before I do anything degenerative. Now, <laughs> oh man, dude, we're in the same boat. I had uh, some coworkers, man. They were like, "Yeah, you want to drink?" I look at them. I'm like, "Dude, if we didn't have practice in the morning, I'd be up all night drinking with you." But listen, ten o'clock hits. I'm going to bed on a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's one of the things I learned. Like, I was always that weird one in the music scene, uh, just g- in generally where I'm from, because I, I always hated everybody's like, oh, you're the headliner. I'm like, no, that just means I play last. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and one of the things you learn, especially when you're not, you know, like we got to a point where we're the headliners of our show. So people are there to see us. But when you're not that band, it's like, when it's three or four local bands and the show starts at 10 o'clock and it's Tuesday. Oh, and then everybody's like, Oh, your head. It's like, Oh, I start at 1 AM. So that way. And I was like, and so I'm playing to like my friends, if my friends are even nice enough to stay around. Yeah. And I've always argued that like I was, I would have arguments with, uh, with bar owners. Cause their whole thing was they want you to stay. They want the crowd to stay till at least one 30. So they don't mm-hmm. have time to go to another venue. So they're just trying to keep them drinking. Right. Right. And I would always argue with them. I was like, if that worked, then national touring acts would start at 10 PM, but they don't, they start at 8 PM. They start at 7 PM. I was like, get people to show up. So you make your money. And then, especially for bands that are uh, like climbing up in their notoriety, they'll stick around and people will hang out with them. And it's way better to get more people to show up at 8 AM than it is to get 15 people that will show up at 11 PM. Yeah, you ain't lying. Just, uh, I know, man. And it's been the fight and it's weird to me that most bar owners don't get it. We're like here in, um, I'm in Colorado right now. And the cool thing here is everything's done by midnight as far mm-hmm. as the shows, you know, and even in like our contracts, we had to start putting that in. Like we had to start putting, no, you're paying for us for July 20th at midnight. It's July 21st. So we're not playing it July 21st. So we have to go on that day. That's when we're there to be there. 
mm-hmm. because I hated that shit so much. And it was just pointless. People hated it too. Their energy has gone. They're just done, you know? And it's just the reality of entertainment in general. Nobody, nobody who wants to be supportive that's not fucking 22 and even 22 year olds now don't want to stay out till fucking two in the morning to see some band that they don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, I've actually recently uh, started a stand up career and most of them start about nine o'clock. The list drops about eight. Uh, mm-hmm. But man, this next show, I'm getting ready to go to at the end of the month in Macon, Georgia. Uh, it starts about nine. Depending on how big of the crowd's yeah. going to be, I'm going to be there until about midnight. But last time yep. the crowd was so big, I was like, it was two in the morning. I was going up the interstate because making where I'm from is like an hour and a half. So I'm like, God, it's two in the morning, man. I just performed like a six minute set. I'm like, wait, why am I doing this to myself? Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, in the comedy world, too. And that's one of the things that I had to learn because, uh, you know, like I spoke for, you know, Johnny Hopeless, that character is not just a musician. It's a comedian as well. And mm-hmm. the whole the whole story behind that character is he's trying to win back his girlfriend mm-hmm. because she's like, you're fucking dead. I don't want to be with a dead guy. And he took that as she doesn't think I'm good enough. So if I become a superstar, then she'll love me. Cause chicks like money. Cause again, he's a zombie and he's dumb. So, <laughs> so he's like, he's going to be a comedian. He's going to be a musician. He's going to try to, uh, like on some of our albums, we have ideas for new businesses. Like we had a, um, the, we called it the business harpoon and it's for negotiations. So if you don't <laughs> like us or what we offer, we bring in our harpoon to shoot you with it. <laughs> That's a good one. Way, right. Yeah. And then there's another one like the brain. I had one called the boomstick as an homage to Ash. Right. And it was, uh, it was sold to babysitters and it's basically just a shotgun to make kids shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's like yeah but again all of that come the funny part is all of that comes from a place of love right right <laughs> but the, the weirdest thing was going from the music world into the comedy world because people view things so much differently there because uh, mm-hmm. almost i kind of view the, the entire entertainment industry is in a way based off of egoism, right? Like you want to be seen, you want to be heard. It's about you. That's why you're on a stage. So you're elevated above the crowd. So they pay attention. Right. Um, Right. And, but I know that going in. So I try to, to meet everybody where they're at, but what's been hilarious to me is like, I'll go up there in costume and uh, I've tested it because I have a set that's my set. And then I have a set that's the zombies set. Uh Uh-huh. And it's so funny because if I go too dark, people hate me personally. But if I say the same exact joke as the zombie, then they're all about it. Like they've let that willing suspension of disbelief go. And it's, yeah, it's, but I get that going into it. And it's just funny because, and I've had this told to me, like I was at the world series of comedy and I did, uh, the, there were several comedians that I was in character. They would not talk to me. What? And then one of them straight up came up after me and he was like, man, I wanted to see if you were hacky first before I came and introduced myself to hang out with you. Because he was like, most of the gimmicks, like comedians typically hate gimmicks because for them it's about the wordplay. Right. So you have to be good and do both. Right. And so his whole thing was like, yeah, I wanted to see if you had like bits and you weren't just leaning into this as your act. And I was like, no, man, I do it all. Like I do comedy i do music i do writing i do producing so it was one of those things that was heartwarming to me to see someone actually take this joke seriously because it is i mean it's a it's a way to kind of mock all of it it just so happens that i use the avenue of horror and shit that looks disgusting like you've seen the the like on tiktok you've seen it the the mask right so yeah, yeah. And I got the, the guys who did it for The Walking Dead to make it for me because I needed to sing through it. Yep. And, you know, my wife was like, I don't understand. Like, she gets it. She's very supportive of it. But she was like, I don't understand why you always have to make everything so, like, disgusting. And I said, well, that's the, that's the trick is I want, I want people to view it like a car accident mm-hmm. and then be on my side because it's good. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, this guy can actually sing even though it looks hokey or disgusting. So now I kind of want to pay attention or 
this very frightening thing made me laugh. Like one of my ba- favorite experiences outside of like picking on the walking dead co- cast at the comic con was like messing with the kids. Right. And all these kids were like really scared at first. Cause it's really realistic, but um, I would make them like beat me up, you know, and kill me. So it's like, they get to conquer their, their fear. Cause they're, you know, six, seven years old. Right. And I don't like terrifying children, you know, like I don't like terrifying young kids. So I try to make it a fun experience in that way. And I have to bridge the gap a lot. So like I have a set for it adults, but when I do haunted houses, you know, and there's 1200 people in the audience, I can't be dropping F bombs when there's a, cause some parents are irresponsible and they got an 11 year old kid right. <laughs> coming to this haunted house. Yeah. They're about to see graphic violence and gore and all this stuff, but that's their parents' job. Their parents chose to do that to them. Right. Right. So I'm going to play it down a little bit on my end just to kind of be respectful. Cause I don't know what I'm dealing with. But online, I'm just a douche. <laughs> <laughs> online, I'm a douche. In person, I'm pretty cool, man. Oh, man. That's, right, right. That's pretty good. Well, right now, we've got a dog that's scared of the toaster. So if you can teach me how to get him not be scared of the toaster, that'd be great. <laughs> you got to let him chew your toaster up. I'm, I'm telling you, listen, la- last week, because I have Fridays off right now, last week my wife told me, he's like, yeah. yeah, he's been scared of the toaster for some weird reason. So I grabbed the toaster. I put it on the floor. I said, Jack, come here, buddy. Really? Yeah, I put it on the floor. I said, Jack, come here, buddy. I said, when we see the toaster, we look at the toaster. We say, hey, toaster, I'm going to kick your ass. And I kicked it. And he just said, whoa. <laughs> I said, yeah, Jack. I picked right. it up. He snipped it, and he went. He took his little head. He went, boop. I said, yeah, Jack, you kicked that toaster's ass. My wife goes, please don't teach the dog to kick the toaster's ass. I said, he's scared of it. Right, right. The only difference is now he's going to come and eat your toast or just knock it over when you're actually using Lord, it. Lord, no, he's a... We keep it way off the ground. Trust me. I have learned living with them dogs that I can't put nothing nowhere. They, no, man. They've, uh, wow. my recliner now has become their recliner. And if I just leave like little, you know, the little nightstand you have, you know, you leave a plate of food or like a yeah. Mountain Dew or whatever on there. I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave this here for a second. I get up. What's he doing? Oh, no, Eating the food. I'm like, dude, how'd you even make that? Jo-? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's that's theirs now. I'm telling you, you <laughs> talking about the little kids calling their fear made me think of the toaster. So there you go. And there's for everybody at home. Yeah. The dog right now is scared of the toaster, which he's usually in our that's videos, okay. but I've got them locked out of the room because right now they're eating, and it's like, y'all are going to eat and leave me alone. Yeah, uh, that's, I totally get it. I got to hide it away. <laughs> you ain't lying. Speaking of touring, what has been one of your favorite places to visit while you guys go on tour? Uh, so every time I go on the road, I try to like, see something, um, I don't know, local to the area. Cause I just get tired of like McDonald's, mm-hmm. and, you know, everything's starting to look the same. So I don't know. Let's see. Uh, man, probably like one of my, there's, there's a couple places that stick out. Right. So one of them was in Fort Collins. I did this uh comedy show and there was this uh 1980s pizza place Ooh. right yeah it was super dope i forgot the name of it offhand i'll i'll send it to you later but man like it it had like all the 80s memorabilia but then it also had like the classic horror stuff so they had like a freddy krueger but instead of like his fingers it had uh like pizza cutters oh that's pretty neat you know? and i just thought that was really witty and then <laughs> yeah man and then uh yeah, the bathrooms had like Richard Simmons over one and Rosie O'Donnell over the other. And it's just like really funny shit. And they didn't take themselves too seriously. So that was pretty cool. And then another one was in Arlington. There was a zombie bar. I've seen the zombie that bar. That was all like, yeah, yeah. It was all horror theme based. And that was badass, you know? Uh, and then like, I don't know, I'm starting to name like just food places. Obviously, like I always stop it at comic book stores or hey, we love food or, here. Like, uh, yeah, man, dude, uh, Lankford grocery uh-huh. when I was in, uh, I think was that in, yeah, that was in Houston. That place was dope. Like they had this thing called the grim burger mm-hmm. and it had a uh, jalapenos, fried egg cheese. Like it was just my favorite thing of all times. And it was named the grim burger. So of course I was going to try that at first. Oh, yeah. So yeah. And then, uh, Topeka, Kansas, man, that was, that was a really interesting one. Like I went and did a haunt out there, mm-hmm. uh, and found another little like local place to go out 
and eat at. So I like doing that, man. And then just if there's touristy things to do, I'll go check that out. You know, like uh, when I was in Vegas, I wanted to go to the top of the Strat. So I did that. And I didn't get to go to the mob museum. They weren't going to let me in. I wanted to go in character. <laughs> oh yeah. And, they weren't uh, letting you in. Yeah, yeah. No, they were like, Oh, it costs 400 bucks to do that. And I was like, well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> 400 <laughs> bucks to walk around. Cause I was trying to, well, it was for the content. So it was cause, cause I was going to be filming in character. Oh, ah, okay. So yeah. They, they were the money off. Of that. Yeah. And so I have to watch that. Cause I try to do, um, and if you see our stuff, like I'll, I'll try the cool thing to me is going, uh, not during Halloween, right? right? Cause at Halloween they expect. It. So if it's like July and I go in like one time I went and did a live stream from a marijuana dispensary here <laughs> and that was crazy, you know? And it's like the zombie walking around in mid July, <laughs> you know? And then I'll, I like doing that kind of thing. You know, I'll go to like a donut. I went to voodoo donuts in, like in character, you know, mm-hmm. and that was just like, uh, I love those interactions, especially because it's so off putting. So when I find someone who's willing to play along, it makes it all the better. So dude, how, yeah, that, those are probably- how, uh, how spooked were the weed dispenser people when you walked in? You think they were already high when you walked in? Oh, of course they were high when I walked in. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Right. But, uh, no, they were, so the owner knew I was coming. Okay. The workers didn't. So they <laughs> like, yeah, they were like taken back. I always get a double take and then people are not sure what's happening. But then when I kick into gear and I start doing the like fake accent and saying ridiculous stuff, then they kind of start playing along and you know, they always have permission to not, it's not like I'm going to chase somebody. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Yeah. Like I'll have dudes start telling me like, I'll do things like give me a pickup line you know, cause again, trying to, trying to get back the love of my life. So I always try to find new pickup lines from people. Chicks are always the funnest to mess with, <laughs> you know, because once they get into it, they go hard, they go harder than the dudes do, you know? Really? So when they play, although, yeah, yeah. Except for like the older women, they'll get really mad. Like I had one, one chick, I just sang, uh, I was at this, uh, it, it was, I don't know how to explain it other than, um, it's like a casket party uh-huh. you know like uh over, over here they have a, a a festival in manitou springs is the coffin races <laughs> and so uh yeah yeah so everybody builds a coffin and they got to run it down the hill and whoever wins so i was going out there and i was like serenading people but i told this woman i was like yeah i'm trying to get my chick back uh but i'm working on pickup lines maybe you could help me and she's like oh sure and i was like hey are uh, you an angel? And she smiled. And I was like, cause you look like the chick I buried in my backyard. Oh. And she just fucking was like, <laughs> she went deadpan. And I was just like, man, you're, you're looking at a zombie, you know, and the, the, the philosophy, not the philosophy, but the thing behind the zombie is like, I eat people, you know, like I'm a murdering machine, but this joke made you sensitive. <laughs> it's like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Just, in, just roll with it. Because that's like going to a horror movie and being mad that, you know, Freddie said something sexist right right before he murdered another child. It's like, shut up. <sighs> They're bad people for a reason. You ain't lying. So let me ask you this. On the music video, I'm going to need a bigger boat. Was that was the whole inspiration behind that song, the movie Jaws? Because when I was doing research, I saw that yeah. one. I was like, that has to be a Jaws reference all the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh that album's called shark week W E A K. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we put it out on shark week just to make fun (laughs) of the fact that there's this one time a year that everybody's totally cool with people getting murdered or getting, getting killed by sharks. Mm -hmm. And so you got to watch Sharknado like 20 times. Yeah. Like we have a song about Sharknado, which is the sharks are circling. And then we're going to need a bigger boat is about uh, Jaws part one. And then uh, Ocean Blue is about part three because of how stupid, like one of the things we'd like to do is, is mock everything. That's really what we do. And, uh, you know, like when you listen to that song, it almost sounds like a a love song, but it's just about the female shark hunting the human Mm -hmm. because in the story, you know, she could smell their bloodline. And we're like, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard that a shark would travel 
across the ocean because it could smell the bloodline of the person that killed its mother that it never met. This is dumb as fuck. Uh, I, <laughs> so I was like, we're going to make fun of that. I mean, it's Jaws, man. You run out of Jaws too. Yeah. Oh man. I've never been the biggest Jaws fan. You start to run out of so many ways. Yeah. You can only, you can only eat someone so many ways in a shark movie. Oh God. You ain't lying. I see the sad part is my brothers, all of them love Jaws and all of them love the Meg. You know, the Meg, Meg 2, all the Jaws. And I'm over here like, I don't care. It's been done. Stilberg <laughs> did it in the 70s. Whoever did it before Stilberg, it's like, dude, it's been done. Let it die. Yeah. I don't care that the, uh, I'm drawing a blank, the stunt man, Jason, um, not Jason Momoa, but the stunt guy, Jason. um, Stateman? Stur- yeah, Jason Stateman. Yeah, like Jason Stateman, dude, badass stuntman. I like his movies, but that Meg, the Meg movies, I was like, dude. You can't save this movie for me. I'm not watching it. Yeah. See, I've never watched it because of that. Because I already saw all the giant shark movies. You know, I saw Deep Blue Sea. That's- I saw, I, I only watched Sharknado because at least it was a different take. Although I am looking at, uh, was it Shark Zombie? I downloaded that. So I'm going to see what that looks Ooh, like. Ooh, okay. Because that's stupid. So I'm going to love it. You know, like I love horror comedy. For sure. Sharknado, I'm I agree with you. Sharknado was something different. And it was something stupid. I'm like, all right, this is a sci fi budget oh. movie. But then it becomes a cult classic yeah. and you're like, Okay, I dig this. And now there's like what, ten of them? And it's like, all right, this should stop yeah. after the third it's one. Like, yeah, there's enough shark weather events. We can let it go. There's not gonna be shark earthquake and there, know, there might be tsunami. Hey, there might be somebody yeah, might be listening. Might, yeah, I, I might have I just fucked it up. You know, shark spelunkers where they <laughs> go into a cave and all of a sudden you're just screwed. Great. Yeah. By the time this episode comes out, we're going to see like in the year, like late 2024, early 2025, coming this fall or coming this summer, shark spelunking. Right. God dang it. I inspired, we inspired somebody. Yeah. I, look, if I can alter the culture through entertainment, that'll be hilarious. Oh, I'm, I'm here for hilarious. it. Hashtag shark spelunking. Yeah. I'm going to tweet that later. Sharks spelunking. I might make that another album title. Dude, I'm gonna go tweet that later. Cause I'm be like, why are you tweeting about shark spelunking? Go, go listen to today's recording. You'll understand. Yeah, you'll see. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear, I cracked my own self up. Uh, That's good. Let's see. It's good to be your best friend. You ain't lying. Uh, let's see. Oh, here. We- I'm never bored because I have so many different thoughts that are just that I have to come back all the time. So, <laughs> so it makes for an interesting experience. I feel like you've answered this question. Uh, what are some songs uh, that has been, what are some songs that have been a big inspiration for your band? So when you guys are getting ready to write an album slash EP or whatever, what, what songs come to mind that you guys are like, okay, I like this song and it inspired me to write this album. Um, so, for Juan and I, like we're the major writers of it. I'm, I predominantly write most of the material and then I kind of show it to mm-hmm. him because we like a lot of the similar stuff. But if we sit down and do a style, it's either going to be Danzig, Misfits or Typo. Okay. And sometimes it's all three where we'll, we'll um, mix it up. Like there's this song called Detention, which is we got lazy because we joke around that like a person is smart, but people are stupid. So <laughs> you can't make a title you can't make a title that people can't find. So it's like, okay, this is the name of the movie and this is the song about the movie. So it's just detention. And in the middle of that, like we were writing it and there's a bunch of big woes and stuff, but we're like, okay, we need a breakdown. Cause we had two riffs. We need a third one. So we're like, let's do a typo negative style riff within that. And then um, Johnny angel does like the best Peter Steele impersonation you'll ever hear. So if, anybody's into like old typo negative or goth. It's just this over the top breathy vampire, you know, and then super low vocals, but the, the verse he's singing is all about um, someone getting a blow job from a bear in space. You know, like you gotta, (laughs) you gotta see it. Turn for the worst. Yeah. It was you who uh, in the pictures from school who blew the bear from space is the line, but it's done in this very melodic, pretty way. Like I said, one of the things we really try to do is say something outlandish, but make it catchy. So it's like that earworm that you really didn't want stuck in your head, but you can't get rid of. 
Yeah, you're not lying. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, oh, yeah, man. We try to play with, you know, like I said, everything is kind. It's in. It's an intentional mockery, right? So if you listen to all our songs, they're all like pop mm-hmm. format, right? Because the simplicity of the pattern for people, and then it's the repetition, yep. and we do that on on purpose because it's like we want to make fun of how easy it is to get people to do that. And really more than anything else, it's, are, are they doing it and having a good time, you know? And once they do that, like I said, we'll get them to sing anything, anything along with us, as long as they're having a good time. And that's what they're there for. So like I said, nothing better than like, I did this one backyard show in Denver and it was hilarious because nobody I knew it was a comedy Mm -hmm. show. Right. Uh, And I got up there and part of it, and I got up there as hopeless and I did, uh, we're going to, I stole this guitar from a homeless guy, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm going to sing this song uh, about ass to mouth. And then, and then I'm like, a centipede, b centipede, c centipede. And then it's the call and response. And then I get them to yell ass to mouth. And like 70 people were yelling ass to mouth outside at 10 PM in a neighborhood, (laughs) (laughs) you know? I was like, we want to thank you neighbors for being patient with everybody being excited about ass to mouth. (laughs) (laughs) It's, the unifying experience <laughs> you know <laughs> and so it's like those moments are like are some of the key ones where i just i get into it and you do in comedy you know what i mean like when everybody's on your side and they're cracking up laughing and they're just with you that's the that's like one of the best feelings in the world because you know for me it's like man i made this person forget about their shitty day just for the time that i'm yeah. up here and that's our goal that's our goal as entertainers is like that's why if, if you see in our live footage, um, when we play at venues, we bring our own Halloween gear. So when you come into the room, it's like body parts <laughs> and caution tape and gore. And it's just like, we own that room. So when you walk in there, it, you're not walking into that venue anymore. You're walking into our world. And so you're completely immersed in it. And you, if you're not playing along at that point, it's your fault. Right. You know, like you did that. You're doing this to yourself because <laughs> the funny and our drummer said it best once it's like uh we had a roadie that was helping us hang up decorations he's like i don't know if it looks right and he goes hey man it's jason and the krugers you got to put in some effort but it doesn't you can't make it look like you cared about the effort that you put in because it's it's still punk rock so you don't have to give a shit if everything's lined up it's just got to be blood on the wall you know it's just got to be some tape somewhere so yeah i like that model ah care but don't care it works. Yeah, uh, yeah. I care enough to show you I'll try, but I'm not going to try too fucking right. hard. <laughs> oh, man. So let me ask you this. This is uh, my last question before we wrap up. What has been your yeah. favorite song to do for the Z- solo zombie series that you guys have on YouTube? Uh, Man. Um, that's a hard one, dude, because I do a lot of different covers. I guess... Uh, one of my favorite things to do, I, I don't even remember the song. I have to look it up, but it was like this country song. Um, and, uh, was it? I would have loved you. I think is the name of it. And the reason, or I could have loved you. And the reason I like doing that song is because if you watch it, it'll be me standing in front of mm-hmm. a poster, just making fun of reimaginings and reboots. Right. <laughs> because and then I always started with like some text of like, I didn't want to say anything, but you made me because you're attacking those I love. Right. So it always starts off as this dramatic, uh, I care about whatever cause that other people are thinking about, but I don't. And then it's like, uh, the, the two major ones I did that went really well was, um, for the army of darkness, not the army of darkness, the evil mm-hmm. dead remake, not the most recent one, the one before. Cause I was like, Oh man, you girl boss this movie so much that, and I don't, it's not that I care about like powerful chicks in movies. It's she took a chainsaw and cut the ultimate evil in half. And I was like, so she wins. Whereas in evil dead, the best thing about evil dead was there is no winning. You just keep losing and you're surviving. Right. right? So there was no, this one, they didn't have an anti-hero. They just had super, super girl hero who overcame everything on her own and wins at the end. And I was like, this is Oh, bullshit. wait, yeah, you're talking about the newest it, one, right? Evil Dead Rising? No, no, that was the one with the... I didn't see the newest one yet. I'm going to go watch uh, it. it. The one right uh, before. Uh, yeah. 
that don't, I, I'm interested in seeing it just because I like evil dead, but it looked more horror than camp. It was I like campy. Like evil dead to me is campy. Horror, it is. Oh, right? extremely. Even. Though, yeah. And even the series, it was, they played it fast and loose. So the gore was there. The scary parts were there, but the comedy was always an important underlying thing. And so when they did the remake and they just tried to make like the hero straight laced, I was like, this is not the evil dead. I like, and then uh, one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacres was another one I made fun of because I loved it until the very end because the chick takes a hatchet and then cuts off leather faces. Yeah, that was the newest. Ew, uh, yeah, well, it's not new anymore. Yeah, that was the newest one on Netflix. I was like, really? Right. Yeah, I was like, how's he going to Texas Chainsaw Massacre with one arm? Like, he can't do that anymore. And then I was like, what the fuck is the deal with the baby? Yeah. <laughs> Why is he saving? What is going on with that? That one was good. That and one was so, good at the beginning. Like, to me. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that scene where the chick, uh, uh, was it, shoots herself in the head and the camera goes through yep. the wound to the van. That Like, the cinematography on that is amazing. And there's so many things that... Like in a lot of these horror movies that they're they're doing, in my opinion, right, that I think are excellent, and they're taking it to another level, and then they just ruin it by suddenly forgetting all the hard work by throwing in some campy bullshit that had nothing to do with the movie. Yeah, I will, I agree with you. The cinematography for horror movies have gotten a whole lot better. I agree with you hundred percent. And yeah. but it's like then they just do this like wild left curveball, and I'm like, really. It's like, I'll give you an example. Yeah. One series that I used to hate with Burning Passion, but now I kind of like, I'm intrigued with it. Was the Chucky series. I don't know if you watch any of that one. I haven't seen that. Um, I watched the movies a lot, but I haven't seen the, the series, series is good. It's, it's a continued content. It's a continued consultation. Con- you know what I'm trying to say? It, they, they all tie together, Constant. except the one where, except that weird yeah. reboot one they did with Mark Hamill, where Chucky was like an AI robot. <laughs> That one was just weird, and I was. I didn't see that. I didn't know that you didn't. Existed. You don't remember that when, dude? Yeah, it was like. No. Yeah, it had to be the same time when all the horror, movies, all the major horror franchises were coming together. Like it was the same year as Chainsaw Massacre, the one we were talking about. But instead of the original voice yeah. actor for Chucky, they did Mark Hamill, and instead of Chucky being oh. a serial killer that voodoo at all, it was just an AI robot toy that just. Again, AI gain conscience. What's an AI going to do? It's yeah, going to yeah, kill yeah. you. And it's like, right. I'm like, I, it, that ruins it, bro. I'd be mad. I'm glad I didn't watch that. I'd be mad as hell, yeah. dude. Because the whole thing about it, that, yeah, I like the, the serial killer trying to find an escape, you know, putting his spirit in the voodoo doll. It's cool. I would, I would recommend it still, but don't go in with high hope. Yeah. The TV show I recommend. <laughs> TV show I recommend because it's pretty cool. Again, there's some pretty cool cinematography stuff and things like that. Yeah, man. If you get a chance, look up Versus. Uh-huh. Um, like I said it's a foreign film, but and if you get a chance, watch it with the dubs because the script is much oh, yeah? better with the dub. Oh my god, dude, the script is so funny, man. And but the thing that made it is the cinematography mm-hmm. is just the fact that this dude did a low budget film. And now I forgot. I just looked up the guy's name, uh, the act, like the lead actor. He, uh, he's in another, well, he's in a bunch of movies now, but, um, like the newest one he was in is like crazy samurai one versus 400. And it's just like a single shot samurai film. But the cool story about it is like this dude made verses with like $10,000 and, um, yeah, barely anything, dude. And like I tell you, when you watch it, it's one of the best movies because when you see some of the, the sword fighting scenes and the the graphics for like when they cut people in half, you're like, dude, that right there was like a thousand dollars gone, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And, uh, but the lead he found doing underground street fights that were illegal. <laughs> and so he just turned him into this actor mm-hmm. and was like, I just need you to fight, you know, and stop getting in trouble. And now the dude is a, a huge international star for that. And, but like I said, man, it's just, uh, go on a wild ride with it. Like go, just accept that everything presenting you presented to you is what it is. And it'll be one of the, like the best films. You'll okay. Ever see. Well, John, that's pretty much all my questions. Um, where can the people find you at home so they can check out your awesome content and things like that? 
Yeah, man. So look up uh, Jason and the Krugers on TikTok, uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And then, uh, yeah, we're on all platforms for music sales. But if you want to really support us, of course, like email us and buy it directly from us because then we don't have to pay anybody else anything because fight the power. <laughs> and yeah, that's it, man. Check it out. All the Jason the Kruger stuff. And um, yeah, you can find us on all those platforms. Uh, don't go there if you're sensitive. I'll just save you the <laughs> I'll save you oh, the time. Oh, man. But yeah, guys, as always, you can check out my my sports podcast, The More Sports Podcast, where you never know what we're going to do over there. We always have fun. And of course, we have our movie podcast, Popcorn Book, it's where we review a movie every Sunday. And we've also done some foreign films over there and some low-budget films. Can't think any on top of my head. Well, then do that. Bro, if you do verses, I'll freak out. I'll be so excited because I don't even know if anybody's ever reviewed We haven't it. done it yet, but we, on Popcorn Buckets, our goal is to find, like, we do do some, like, main continuity ones, like, you know, mainstream ones, but every once in a while yeah. we go digging and we're like, ooh, this one. Yeah, that's the one to dig, bro. That's okay. the one to dig. And also, <laughs> then we also have, then you can also see the video version of this interview on our YouTube channel, Random Incorporated, along with any other, every other guest we've done this year. And we're also on social media and Instagram as Rando Boy and on Twitter, Rando Corporate One. Uh, Jonathan, you got any last words? Ah, man, keep it horror, keep it metal. All right, guys. Enjoy life. All right, guys, until next time. All right, later. Let me see. Well, stop. Okay, there we go. Well, Jonathan, that was uh, pretty much it, man. I appreciate.